I'm happy to uh, introduce to you our speaker for this morning, our guest speaker. Uh, he has been once in a while, he was here, and I know some of you have known him quite, and I don't think I have to introduce him a uh, long introduction, but he has been here, he has, been, he has shared uh, a couple of times, and let's welcome uh, Reverend uh, Jerry Balbuena. Well, okay, but it is an honor to be back here after na wala kayong service the other Sunday. But uh, I praise the Lord. God is always good. And uh, when I was still in the seminary, my professor told me, he said, Jeremiah, if you want to be invited again, don't go beyond 45 minutes when you preach. And perhaps I did it, I did it the first time. Uh, it was not beyond 45 minutes. That's why I am invited again. Or, might be, the reason being I'm invited again is because UBC wants me to take back everything I said the, the first time. I'm just kidding. But uh, join me as we are going to start this service, I mean this sermon with a word of prayer. Lord, we come to you. Filled with gratitude, Lord, and honor because we can be in your very presence. We always recognize, Lord, the church is always your home. And we are welcome in it. We always carry the church, Lord, with us everywhere we go. Because that is your plan, that is your design. But sometimes, Lord, we find ourselves, Lord, perplexed. Because... We are still in this world. We are still in this life. We are still in this flesh. But yet, you mandated us. You gave us the responsibility, Lord, to be your witnesses to the world. Sometimes, oh God, we can say that it would have been easier if the angels will be the one evangelizing the whole world. But no, that is not your plan. Your plan is for all of us. To stand as your witnesses. To stand and evangelize. To go out and win our friends, our acquaintances, our families, Lord, to you. And Father, this morning, as we're going to tackle into that subject, Lord, I pray, open our hearts and our minds. Prepare our understanding, Lord Jesus, that we will go out from this place today, filled empowered and encouraged, Lord Jesus, to go on. Thank you so much. We always believe that your words are always anointed. And we ask, oh God, that the anointing from your words will flow to each of our hearts. That we will not be just hearers, but we will be doers, oh God, of your word. We give you glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay. Every time... And this is what I have observed after 42 years in full-time ministry. Every time we run out of words, when we go out to evangelize and witness somebody, we'll just say, believe me, there is always power in the name of Jesus. We always do that. We always use that. But one time I stopped and I said, is there really a verse in the Bible that says there is power in the name of Jesus? Can we have that, the, the PowerPoint, please? But actually, I'm sorry to tell you, there is none. There is not a verse that says there is power in the name of Jesus. Just like the word Trinity. You cannot find the word Trinity or the, a verse that says Trinity in the Bible. Maganda pa yung United, eh, Mirun. Bethel meron din. There is not a verse in the Bible that says there is power in the name of Jesus. But you know what? Let me give you this. In the New Testament, Jesus demonstrated authority over demons, over sicknesses, and even death through his name. 
Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name which is above every name. When the 70 disciples returned, they returned with joy saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. But here's the good news. There are 34 verses in the New Testament that supports the concept that there is power in the name of Jesus. It was this group, the Jesus culture, they composed that song, Break Every Chain. And then we, we are taking that as, there is power in the name of Jesus. As if, as if there is a verse that says that. Nevertheless, the reason why we are saying that there is, and we always declare that there is power in the name of Jesus, the reason why we obey the words of Jesus, the command of Jesus, there is power in the name of, I mean, because we believe that there is power in the name of Jesus. The reason why we worship, the reason why we give him glory and honor, the reason why we pray, the reason why we read the Bible, the reason why we apply the biblical precepts in our lives is because we always believe and we are fully convinced that there is power in the name of Jesus. But this morning, see, last 2009, I made a promise to myself that I will not preach a single sermon in my life. I will just tell stories. And this morning, I am doing it in a different approach. I will just be raising three questions. And after answering these questions, the sermon is over. Is that all right? UBC, you allow that? Okay. Okay. Now, here we go. The next frame, please. The reason being that God uses us regardless of our weaknesses. You see, the Apostle Peter asked that question first. He said, Lord, we have relinquished everything. We left everything for your sake. We, you, you told us to follow you. Lord, we left that. We left our businesses. And then what is there for us? And perhaps the rest, perhaps with the exclusion of Judas Iscariot, the, all the 11 disciples, they were wondering why the Lord is demonstrating his power in us that we are just this. We are not super beings. But let me make this proposition to all of us as we go on. That you and I, we are a demonstration of God's power that is working in us. Whether we like it or not. God is demonstrating his power in us. Now look at yourself. And look at the neighbor. Or look, look at that person. You look at the person that is seated next to you. They are just ordinary people. Sometimes, can I, can I say something in Tagalog? Okay lang ba? Cebuano kasi ako eh. Gagamitin ko yung aking Tagalog. Paminsan-minsan. Di ba minsan? Nagagalit pa nga tayo pag kinatay bigla habang nagdadrive tayo sa EDSA or sa ano. Tapos, tingin mo sa sarili mo, eh, naka, nakasuot pala ako pang simba. Sorry, sorry Lord. <laughs> Now, if, if you have not experienced that, then you are not living. If you have not experienced na magagalit ka, you are not living. If you have, ex you have not experienced that you g become so frustrated with people, even with your spouse, even, wow, I mean, everything. Because part of our lives is, we are still resonating with the world. Am I right? We are still, how I wish 
that you and me, because we are serving the Lord, we are living as super beings. Okay. There is a movie that was produced, directed by M. Night Shyamalan. Okay. And the film, the, the title of the movie is Unbreakable. I think this is 1990s. Unbreakable. Unbreakable, it speaks about the supernatural identity crisis that they said in each one of us. Can we just have all three? Okay. This is actually the story. If, if you have not seen it, let me just give you a synopsis. This is actually a story of somebody who experienced, who was in a train and, and, and the train was wrecked. Everybody died except him. Everyone. The, the operator of the train, the conductor, everyone in the train, all the other passengers, more than a hundred, except this guy. His name was David Dunn. He came out from the total wreck. He did not only come out from there alive, but he came out without a scratch, without a broken finger, without a broken rib. He walks away from it. But you know what? Here's the thing. Instead of being relieved by his good fortune, he was troubled by this remarkable outcome. He was questioning why everybody perished but me. Why was I unharmed? What does it mean? He was living the preceding days and weeks and months of his life asking that very question. Na minsan, na wala na siya ng ganang kumain is because, and he cannot sleep because he was asking himself that question. Why? Until finally he, he met this guy. The name is Elijah. He was so intrigued by Dan's survival. You know why? Because Elijah, he had all the reason he, to be interested. Because he was born with a genetic disorder that leaves his bones especially brittle. In fact, he was called Mr. Glass. Na mabigla lang siyang tumingin, lumingon sa ulo, maaari nang mababali yung kanyang mga buto. Okay, he was known as Mr. Glass. And then he, he met David Dunn. And then he told Dunn this statement. He said, you know why? You want to find out, you want to find the reason why you survived from that wreck? It's because there is something supernatural operating in you. It is not something just for you to enjoy. It is something to be shared. Wow. 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 And I was intrigued on that statement. Because you and me, we have experienced something supernatural when God changes our lives. And we are not supposed to be just be keeping it. We always believe that God has a reason for everything that happens in our lives. And that includes our salvation. That includes our relationship with the Lord. That includes our service to the Lord. We cannot take it just for ourselves. Wow. Thank you for Elijah, Mr. Glass. Now, this seemingly unbreakable human being he was talking about higher destiny. And you know what? It always feels good to think 
that you are not uh, you are not like the other people you are given an extraordinary gift that you cannot keep to yourself that's the second statement the second phrase that's the thing that really calls you and me to really get out and tell people about our experience with the lord but let me believe, i mean let me say this there are no superheroes walking in the streets in our cities nah this is just up, up to the movies okay we are all quite breakable in fact we are lot, a lot we are a lot like mr glass instead of david dunn but here's the thing a lot of times we wish that god created us like david dunn never break a bone never get sick never get affected by virus never experience brownout never experience running out of money to stay we diba i can always remember in 2009 nung ondoy we were still living in kisun city and then I was I was really swimming my way from Mandaluyong to get home on that Saturday afternoon. I reached home at three o'clock. I can remember I just left my car in Shangri-La and then took the last MRT trip up to Cubao Farmers. And then after getting out, there were only three steps from the top and then i started swimming not only swimming because when you swim you swim like that diba but this swimming is you swim like this because tinatanggal mo yung mga basurang lumulutang i just had to get home and then when i reached home our house inside was this deep okay And then I can remember our youngest son he was like about 7 years old during the time we were standing on the in the stairs when I opened the screen door and he said dad why do you think god is allowing this to happen to us He was only 7 years old but that question had been asked by a lot of Christians whenever something happens we always ask god why did you allow it Early on in my ministry I was driving my motorbike and I was I was going to this prayer breakfast with the dean and the professors of the College of Agriculture at Mindanao State University I was still the assistant general Santos during that time and then a drunk policeman hit my motorbike from the rear and then I rolled of course nakakita naman tayo ng nakapanood man tayo ng mga movie minsan so I rolled but actually I broke my back I broke my spine Three months after I was standing like that, and it was so painful. It was so painful when I changed my position. And filling my mind was this question, Lord, I was not going on an excursion. I was going to this prayer breakfast with all these professors and teachers of Mindanao State University. Why did you allow those things to happen? For the next two years, I was standing like this. And sometimes when I preach, I have to ask. I have to ask a high chair that I can just lean on. But something, a, a, a voice deep within, was just telling me, Jerry, just press on. Don't stop. I never did. But you know what? That was also the best time in my life because in that situation. In that situation, I was preaching 17 times a week. It never happened again. When I was well after my surgery, five years after, it never happened again that I was preaching 17 times a week. But this is this is a story just like David Dunn that mean wondering why but you know what the reason being the reason you and me we we still open the best presence that we had this morning opening our two our eyes 
when you wake up. The reason why is because God has something for us. He is, once again, demonstrating His power in us. Okay? That might be something. You might be wondering, where is my text? One time I was preaching at a district convention in Palawan and then the pastor asked me, Pastor Jerry, is it allowed that you, you read your text in between your sermon? Because usually you read your text first. Okay, here's the text. This is found in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 7 to 12. Okay? Ang ganda ng pagkasabi dyan ni Paul. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. Look at this. We are hard-pressed on every side, yet we are not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. We are persecuted, but not forsaken. We are struck down, but not destroyed. And always carrying about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus. That the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our body. For we who live are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake. That the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our mortal flesh. So death is working in us, but life in you. Wow. Now look at that statement again. Paul was writing to the early Christians in Corinth. Most of them were business people. Because Corinth was, was the next city of Athens. The business city. And he said, we have this treasure in earthen vessels. For what? That the excellence of the power may be of God. And not of us. Now, we have to be very careful on this because a lot of Christians experience supernatural healing. They have experienced supernatural power working in them and then they are starting their own ministry because, look at me, I have experienced this. No! It should not be that way. Whatever we experience in God, whether they are good or not really good, whether we are, that's what we have expected or those things that we have not expected, still, it works for the power it was for the design that the Lord has since the very beginning. The reason, the reason why I choose this topic when you are dealing with your series on evangelism or emphasis on evangelism is this. Because a lot, of, a lot of people, they will say, okay, I will just evangelize when I become so rich. When I become so affluent. When I will, I will, no, 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 no. You and me, we are called to do this. Because according to Paul's declaration, huh, we have this treasure in jars of clay. That's the next frame. We have this treasure in jars of clay. You and me, we are just we are just jars of clay. And I love that. I love that. Paul began this verse by claiming that we have these treasures in jars of clay. In this context, we include not only Paul and his associates, but also by extension, everyone who bears the name of Jesus is the treasure that he's talking about right here. I mean, bears the treasure that we're talking about right here. The treasure that he was talking about is the gospel. The treasure that Paul was talking about is not just the message of life and death and the resurrection of Jesus, but also the power behind the message. That everybody will have the chance to experience what we have experienced in the Lord. The very life that God made available through faith in Jesus Christ. But that did not eliminate the idea, the question that we are still just a play. How I wish. Di ba napakadali man sana mag-evangelize? If people will know me. 
if we, oh, everybody in Desmarinias, Cavite, will know Jerry Balbuena as unbreakable? <laughs> never, never experience difficulty and hardship? Wow! And yet we have to be very careful in that. It's because there are a lot of people are also saying and telling and preaching that they will say, okay, when you are serving the Lord, then you should be experiencing this. You should not be experiencing problems. You should not be experiencing difficulties. If you are experiencing problems and difficulties in your business, in your life, something is wrong with you. For sure that is not you. But there is nothing that can be closer I mean, can be farther from the truth. Here is the thing. We are still jars of clay. We are like Mr. Glass. Okay. Other translation use the word earthen vessels. Regardless, the point is that clay pottery was the very common material. For cookware, for dishes, for wash basins, storage during the first century. Of course, iba sa atin ngayon kasi whenever we have this China way, uh-huh. hindi na nagagamit, hindi na feeling, kundi dekorasyon na lamang. That was not the, the original idea of Joseph Glee. Clay pots were used to... Li- Keep liquid because they keep the liquid cool. And it also slowed the evaporation process. Clay was easy to obtain and work with. And then whenever the pot broke, then we can just replace it anytime. That's the nature of Joseph Clay. But the question is, Ito yun. How are we as Christians like Joseph Glee? Have you asked yourself that question? Di ba? I am a child of God. There is also the promise that you can command the stones to worship the Lord. You can, there, is, there, is that, there is the thing, but hey, I, am, I should be treated as supernatural. Why? I'm a child of God. Kapatid, kausap mo, anak ng Diyos ito. Kung hindi ka natatakot sa karma, matakot ka dito. But how are we as Christians like Joseph Clay? As it says right there, clay pots were quite ordinary. Taken clay pots, they are also fragile. One of my professors in Bible college would say, fragile. Mm-hmm. Clay pots are always ordinary. They are everywhere. Especially in the homes of peasants and common people. Well, wealthy people might use some exotic materials such as ivory, marble, glass, or fine wood. But regular people, they use clay pots. Actually, the modern translation, if we're going to translate this phrase of Paul in today's language, we, will, we can say this. We are like treasures in plastic bags. <laughs> Social pa nga yung tupperware eh. <laughs> In plastic bags. Okay. The second is, Joseph Clay were fragile. Compared to marble, ivory, or even wood, clay pots do, will not last. And since it is so cheap, no one really expected it to, to last. People use a, a pot for a while and then when it gets so cheap or cracked to use, Well, we can just replace it with a new one. Okay. Then, here's the question. Why would God store something so valuable in a container so ordinary? 
I promise you, I will just be asking questions. Look at yourself. This morning, when I woke up, prepared myself to leave, I faced the mirror. My wife brought this nice, long, large mirror. They put it in the, in the living room, so I stood up there. And then I remembered Michael, jo- Michael, Michael Jackson's song, The Man in the Mirror. <laughs> Because I, 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 one time I wrote a sermon on that, The Man in the Mirror. When you, when you want to change, when you see, we want to see change in the world, talk to the man in the mirror. And I'm talking to this man in the mirror. And I said, man, you are so fragile. You look so ordinary. But this question remains, why would God store something so valuable? Have you asked yourself that question? Why would God store something valuable in me? Why would God take the risk of calling me his child? When I am far from perfect. When, if there is something that I can display, if there is something that I can be proud of, it will be this. It will be my perfect imperfection. Deeper Lord, the church, people are expecting the worship leaders to always be holy. Hmm? Nagagalit ka para ka namang ordinaryo. Uy, worship leader ka. Uy, jakuno ka. It's a difficult question, huh? Why would God store something? Peter, after denying the Lord three times, Jesus told him, Peter, ah, brother Pete, I prayed for you. <laughs> I prayed for you. Kahit nagagalit ka sa akin, brother Pete, nagagalit ka dahil pinagaling ko yung mother-in-law mo. Just kidding. You didn't hear it from me, okay? Pete, I prayed for you. Regardless of our imperfections, regardless of our shortcomings, God is still using us to contain His treasure. Question is, why? But actually, in psychology, in psychology, it is called the just juxtaposition. The fact of two things being seen or placed close together with contrasting effect. Now, there are two reasons. There are two reasons why, going back to that question. Forward, please. Going to the Why would God store something so valuable in a container so ordinary, just like you and me? Is this. <laughs> God displays his life-giving power in us. See, it is, I mean, do you think it is difficult for God to send the angels to do the evangelizing? Di ba mas maganda nga sana eh? Hindi makahindi yun. Ha? Pag angel na yung kausap, tanggapin mo si Lord, tanggap ka agad. Easy. Eh, bakit si Jerry Balboy na pag ginamit? Pampihira. 
Reason number one, God displays his life-giving power in us. Remember, we are a demonstration of God's power. It is clear that whatever we accomplish is done only by God's power. As we all know, Paul was not really an impressive person. In fact, I believe Paul, if he is in Southern Tagalog District Council, he will never be voted as district superintendent. Why? He was so strict. Whoa. Whoa. Yet somehow the gospel spread through him. That the church was established throughout the known world. Well, I had a chance of going to Middle East and then I asked, I inquired if I can go to Thessalonica just to visit the church that Paul started. And it was really a blessing. Nakakaiyak. I would rather go to places like that than going to Jerusalem. Because we can, we can always resonate. We can, hey, he, here is a guy. Here is a guy that even the original 11 disciples who were stationed in Jerusalem at the General Council headquarters, did not even welcome Paul. <laughs> huh? And yet, God built his church through Paul. God displays his life-giving power in us. Now, the beauty of this is this one. When you, as an earthen vessel, is broken, and then inside you is the contain, I mean, is the treasure that you contain. Of course, that, that is really expected. Nobody will really appreciate the packaging. When you buy something, which is important to you? The item or the packaging? You will have, wow, I mean, they made it good, but you know what? You will not keep the package. You will not keep the, 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 the container. Because we are after is the treasure in you. And yet, this is the beautiful thing, a beautiful concept. Why we are told to evangelize. We are the ones told to carry the treasures of God. Far from perfect. Because God is displaying his life-giving power in us. God displays his life-giving because the harder life gets, the next friend please, the harder life gets, the more conspicuous the treasure becomes. Just like during our younger years, Pastor James, you played basketball before? I was playing basketball until I broke my back. When you play basketball, you don't want to play a ball that is under deflated, right? Because, and, and later on, I mean, it should be perfect. Later on, I learned that the harder the pressure, the higher the bounce. And why would we complain if there are pressures? Why would we say, God, where did you allow these things? The harder life gets, the more conspicuous the treasure becomes. Because now you are not operating by yourself. This is not Jerry Balboin anymore. It is the grace of God. Paul said, I counted everything that they have done, everything that they have accomplished as garbage. Because I want you to see the Jesus in me. That is the reason why we are called to evangelize, to display, to proclaim to those people the power of God that is working in us. Okay? God never promised. The next frame, please. God never promises immunity from hurts and hardships in life. We're not immune to it. In fact, 
This is how I encourage myself. It is the most beautiful bird who gets caged. Pag nakakita kasi yung mga tao ng napakagandang ibon, huhulihin yan at ilagay sa hola. Why? Good for display. The mango tree will only experience stoning when they start bearing fruit. Because nobody will throw stones at the mango tree who only has leaves. When you start bearing fruit, there will be difficulties. And God did not promise immunity from those hurts. We get hurt a lot of times. That was Paul's resume. That's why I said, he will never be accepted even in any managerial position. Why? Because his resume was always pain. Okay? And the second reason why God uses us is because of this. He also dispenses his life-giving power through us. I love that. He's working in us and he's working through us. Isn't that wonderful? Diba? The second, I mean, the reason being is because jars of clay were meant to be used, not admired. And God is not looking for sterling silver teapots. He is looking for rough and tumble clay pots, the kind that can be used every day. Go to the next frame, please. Paul chooses the phrase given over to death to describe our mission. It is interesting that Paul chooses the phrase given over to death to, I mean, to describe our mission because it, it is the same expression the gospel used to describe Jesus being turned over to the authorities. Be flogged and ridiculed. When a believer loses his job in a bad economy but responds with trust and perseverance, the life of Jesus seeps through. When a Christ follower finds himself flat on her back in a hospital bed, uncomfortable and uncertain, yet blesses those around her with grace and faith, the life of Christ is spilling out. Have I told you the story? Oh, no, I, I don't think so. But let me just tell you this. This is 93-year-old evangelist that I met when I was in Tarlac. And then he encouraged me. He said, Pastor Jerry, I am already 93 years old. Sabi ko, it's obvious. And he said, Pastor Jerry, every week, sumasama ako sa gospel bus evangelism. I always serve as the evangelist. Wow, at 93. Yung 93 niya, hindi yung 93 na parang ganito pa rin maglakad. 93 na ganyan. Pastor Jerry. And then, sabi niya, Pastor Jerry, I always challenge people that those who wanted to get to receive healing from the Lord to come forward, I will lay my hands on them. And whenever I lay my hands on them, I have to be very careful because my hands are already attracted with arthritis. I cannot even bend this. Baka matusok pa yung mga mata nila. And then I ask this question, why is it that I'm praying for those who are sick and yet God is not even touching my fingers? Might be a good reason, right? It's reasonable. But he, this he told me, said Pastor Jerry, and people get healed. I lay my hands like this because, yeah, I can I cannot straighten this out. Arthritis, God is best than me. He said, but people get healed. 
God is dispensing His marvelous power through us. We don't have any reason not to follow the Lord's mandate to tell others about Christ. The next frame, please. It is wrong to associate the blessing of God with freedom from pain and hardship. Because the blessing of God is that in the midst of pain and hardship, we continue to trust, we obey, we continue to love, we continue to live the vibrant life of Christ within us. I love that. I love that. Paul is reminding himself and also reminding us all of this fact. Of this fact. Okay. That that the ministry of the gospel is not about us. It is about the Lord. We are clay pots or jars of clay. Jesus is the treasure. Now let's go back to our let's go back to our text. The next frame. Look at this. Consider this again. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels. That the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. We are hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. We are persecuted, but not forsaken. We are struck down, but not destroyed. Always carrying about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. For we who live are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal flesh. So then, death is working in us, but life in you. Can you do one more click? There you go. Paul described his life. Hard-pressed, perplexed, persecuted, struck down. And yet, listen, when he was put in prison, he encouraged Timothy to press on. I love that. I love that. And this is the very core value of evangelism. There is actually nothing that can stop us. There is nothing. You're hard-pressed? Where are you in this? Hard-pressed? Perplexed? Persecuted? Struck down? Kung sa boxing pa yan, yung struck down is, you were knocked down. You were knocked down a lot of times, but you were never knocked out. That's what he's talking about. Because God is manifesting His life-giving power in us, and God is also doing it through us. He doesn't have any other plan of carrying out the task of evangelizing. So Christians, I will end with these thoughts. Paul used these phrases to describe his situation. And we might resonate with that. In fact, if you're going to ask me, I am experiencing all four. (laughs) Right now, I am experiencing all four. Stressed out, mixed up, beaten up, knocked down. Because this place can be a rough place for any clay pot. But someday, somehow, we might be feeling bunk up. 
You might see yourself be crock, chipped, but don't be alarmed. You are not alone. What you are experiencing is quite normal. The extraordinary thing there is God is working in you and God is working through you. Your friends, your comrades, your business colleagues, they will hear the Lord. They will hear the good news through you. Because that is the Lord's plan. 